Hello, Healer Zone, and to all the other light workers and coaches and well-being practitioners out there. I would love to introduce to you on today's Healer Zone TV our wonderful Claire Brunt, who is an MSTR therapist and most importantly to me, trainer, because she is my personal teacher and I value everything that she has taught me. It's been extraordinary. So today we're going to talk about what MSTR is, how it works, and I don't know, we'll just see where the discussion goes, shall we? I think that's probably the easiest thing to do and we don't have to get too strong. Okay, uh, over to you, Claire. Well, hi, Jen. Thank you for the uh, fantastic introduction there. And um, hello to everybody else out there. Looking forward to uh, introducing you to the wonderful world of McLaughlin scar tissue release, MSTR for short. So it's not so much of a mouthful. Okay. I think we'll just put it into uh, speaker mode so that they don't have to sit there and watch me watching you. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. So uh, what is, what is it? What is it physically? What is the process in a way that the rest of the world can understand who hasn't had the delight of experiencing it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very simple but effective technique as you now know yourself almost ridiculously yeah, simple that's how I feel um, even after a, a couple of years now it uh, still leaves me mind blown when I see the results happening before my eyes it's a way of um, opening up the tightly bound collagen fibers that form the scar tissue so we work aesthetically on the scar that we see so that scar on the surface but what we know from using it is that it has a dramatic effect quite often on the scar tissue that's underneath the surface that we can't see and the adhesions that can form due to that scar tissue. I've certainly been experiencing that the clients I've worked with have also had emotional releases from things that are linked to the scarring without having to go into the, the whys and the wherefores they simply reach the end of the session and are more relaxed about the whole thing mm -hmm. and it's just strong. You, you found that obviously as a consistent thing it's um one of the reasons that i'm sat here talking to you today because that's what i had personal experience with um i had uh, my own scar worked on and I hadn't realised that I still had psychological and emotional feelings around what happened. Mm. I thought I'd talked about it. I thought I'd dealt with it. And in that moment, I realised that the body has the ability to hold on to things at a cellular level. And this work is quite often the missing link for a lot of people. Um, myself included and I've gone on to see that in clients and now I'm in the wonderful position of sharing this technique with people like you and other therapists and just seeing them get the same realization that I had in class and then I get to read all their wonderful case studies as well. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely startling when you see the beginning of a session and you're the first time you do it and you think well do I really know what I'm doing here? <laughs> and in 15 minutes, you see a visible, measurable, you know, something you can take a photograph of before and after difference. It's yeah. Um, so when you first came across this process, what, how long did it take to, you know, go through that process? Because I, I seem to remember there was a bit of a space between sessions originally. And that didn't make any difference, did it? It didn't matter how long. No. It um. It's quite a, a funny story. I was um, attending uh, a CPD class that Alistair McLaughlin, who developed MSTR, used to run. And he used to teach MSTR as part of that CPD course. And as other therapists will know, things can be quite heightened when there's a lot of us all in one room, particularly on our training sessions and workshops. And all Alistair was doing was talking like we're talking now about how he developed it, why he developed it and talking about how you would go through the process. And I just could feel tears running down my face. I thought, okay, we'll go with this. This sometimes happens. 
And then I could just feel this sensation coming up. I thought I better excuse myself because I don't want to disrupt any other therapists in their learning. And I excused myself and basically I sobbed for about 10, 15 minutes and I was having flashbacks, which I now understand is actually um, PTSD. One of my very dear colleagues who was on the course at the same time has experience of that himself. And he asked me what happened and I told him and he said, you do realise that's PTSD. And I hadn't really ever associated that with what I went through. It was basically from an emergency C-section, um, which saved my life and my son's life. And that was part of the realisation of just how important this work could be, that there is that link that sometimes perhaps people are, even though, like I did, they talk about these things, they just never quite got over it. They've never quite de dealt with it. And then you throw in the, um, the physical aspect as well. So um, I'm quite lucky in the fact that I never felt any sense of detachment or that my body was cut in half that quite a lot of women with C-sections will express. But even I noticed that my body had actually tried to curl around the scar and that had released. I felt taller. I felt more open. There was a loss of sensation that I hadn't realised until I realised that I could feel more. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I didn't actually have the scar worked on again until um, the second part of that CPD course, which was nine months later. And I'd, I'd gone through quite a bit of processing after that first session, I think p because of the PTSD and the emotional release. Mm. And that was such an experience. The second time around, it was definitely more physical. And I had not lost what I'd gained in that first session. It never goes back. And that was something else. As um, a physical therapist, Sometimes you know that your your client has benefited and the pain has gone, the discomfort has gone, but then it comes back over a period of time. It doesn't always quite hold. And that is where I've been using MSTR in my clinic and with my patients alongside my other therapies. I've been able to apply it to scars because now I really do pay attention when they tell me in their client history about previous surgeries and traumas and accidents. Um, and I'm also able to use it on other fibrous tissue and other areas that may not necessarily have a visible scar on the surface. That's the exciting thing with this work. It's developing really fast. Um, we have some fantastic to think how can I apply this work and that's actually how I've been also uh, introducing it and teaching it to my fellow students oh, okay that's that's very exciting so can you give me a couple of examples of the other things that um, I know plantar fasciitis is one of them that's yeah okay. so yeah plantar fasciitis we have um, the wonderful Dr Mitchell Mosher is a uh, foot surgeon, although now retired, and he uh, is also a Bowen therapist, and um, he instructed Bowen over in the States, and he has regularly shared very generously how he has applied MSTR to help with plantar fasciitis, and he has actually stated on more than one occasion that he would have saved a lot of his patients from surgery if he'd have known MSTR when he was a foot surgeon. So that's quite, yeah, that's quite impressive. Um, we can use it on things like quad tears, ha old quad tears, hamstring tears, restricted shoulder. Basically, it's just enabling therapists when they've used the part of their therapy that they would use and it's still not quite releasing or they're still not quite getting the result that they want, they've now got MSTR and they can go, I'll just, I'll just try this and find that fibrous tissue or find where they feel it's 
not quite releasing mm -hmm. and they're finding that it, that is actually the last little bit in the jigsaw puzzle for them that's a, a powerful toolkit i know that I'm, you know <laughs> what i've been using now it was something that absolutely amazed me was how old the scars can be and still respond can you tell us a little bit about that yeah i get asked this one quite a lot because i think um we just particularly if it's a surgery scar people just you know that's part of it I had to have this surgery and the scar comes with it and we don't really associate anything else with that sometimes if people are experiencing discomfort or pain the doctor will say to them well that's probably down to the scar tissue and the only thing we can do is operate and remove the scar tissue um, but obviously we know that that just forms more scar tissue and on quite often people will say, oh, but that's 15, 20, 30, 50 years old. It really doesn't make any difference. There can be, even just a couple of weeks ago, I was um, teaching a group of therapists and we had scars in there that were over 40 years old. And yeah, they got that look on their face and I was able to say, and now you know. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good because people that because the, the the way that they move due to that scar tissue becomes their new normal. Mm -hmm. So they don't actually recall what it was like before that scar tissue was there until it's released. And and then you get the exclamation of well, people were walking around and they were dropping into squats and bending over back. <laughs> goodness I've got all this range of motion back as well so it's um yeah it, it's it's invaluable the only thing is is that we don't work on really really new scars so it's always a minimum of eight weeks um from a surgery uh, but again I get asked a lot you know oh well how soon how soon and I just say that scar's not going to go anywhere so although we might be getting a bit to twitchy fingers because once we know how good this this technique is we just want to be able to use it and help that person sometimes we just have to wait but that scar's not going anywhere that, that's entirely true um i was gonna say let's um can we have a quick look at a set of before and after photos yeah sure and then then go back into a little bit more about the, the background of how it's started. But right now, let's see if I can persuade this to share. Okay, here we go. Right. So, although this the, these pictures are technically <laughs> sort of sideways. yeah, you can you can see the the um the belt buckle to the left of the picture. <laughs> the of can you yeah. just tell us briefly about what we're seeing here? So as you can see in the top picture, um, this was done by a colleague of mine over in the States. So all credit to uh, Cindy for this. She um, worked on this client and this is from our um, public Facebook page. So if anybody wants to go and find out more information, they can um, visit that. And uh, this person had had quite a few um, abdominal surgeries they'd been cut open twice due to colon cancer so the top picture is before they've worked on the um, the scar and then that middle picture is um, when they've come back to have their second session so taken before the start of the second session and the last picture is at the um, end of the third session I believe so you can really see the um, the difference in the way that scar looks and I believe that the scar feels completely different as well. Yeah well you, you can see that not only that has the colour changed but mm. the amount of lumpy bumpiness in it has. Yeah the thickness has changed and I think also the belly button the, the um, it looks as if the belly button had been um, pulled out of shape in the first two pictures but in the the last picture it looks like the belly button's not so pulled out either. No, absolutely. And, and for the for the viewers, how long approximately would it, each session have been? Do you think for this? So quite for long. this for this scar, um, I would say that that's going to be around about a fifteen minute actual on skin treatment. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, because what we would do is as part of the um, entire session, you're going to be talking to the client beforehand. You're going to be getting them to feel and look at the scar before you start doing the work. And you're also going to be checking in with them whilst you're applying. Um, there are um, a certain number of times that you can apply the technique. So in between each one, you'd also be getting the client to have a look, have a feel, give you the feedback as well as whilst you're actually applying the work. So, I mean, it, it really just depends how that client is reacting at the time because if there's quite a lot of emotional release, then there might be a lot of time just to let, allow them to process. And you're always checking in with them to make sure that they're happy for you to continue, particularly if there is a lot of emotional or psychological release coming. But still, 15 minutes is virtually nothing in terms of the hands-on element. Yeah, it? yeah. It's, it is that fast. <laughs> well... Absolutely. All right. Um, I think that's enough for here. We'll go back to the other screen. Right. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things I wanted to also talk about was what sort of therapists can learn this process because it isn't for absolutely everybody. You do need to have some basic skills before. Yeah. That, so. so this is, you've got to be qualified in a body work. Now that can be um, osteopathy, physiotherapy, um, a reflexologist, Bowen practitioner, Emmet practitioner, yoga teachers, Pilates instructors, because they have to be hands-on in what they do. So it has to be someone with that basis and that qualification initially. This is what we would call a, a CPD. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's brilliant. Okay. Massage, obviously, are uh, one of the major <laughs> ones that I've missed out. Right. Yeah, yeah, and for for my part, it's sort of Abuteko and Reiki, which is sort of an element of that, but I'm probably right at the edge of what would be acceptable. Yeah, we we do have um, a couple of people like yourself that we have taken on a case by case basis because of your experience because of your vast knowledge and because of your teaching experience as well. So um, anybody that's maybe outside of the parameters, we, you know, we look at that as a case by case basis. That's really important for people to, to recognize. Thank you. So just at the back end of this, so where did it all start? Interestingly enough, I, um, I double checked this with Alistair because he hadn't really documented it anywhere. And he came to the realisation, um, he has been a Bowen therapist and was a senior Bowen instructor for a very long time. And then he took Bowen in his own way and developed his own CPD course. And whilst he was developing that, he realised that scar tissue is an issue. And just the way his brain works, okay what can we do about it? Let's have a look. Mm -hmm. And that's where it came from. He realized that there was an issue with scar tissue and how am I going to go about finding a way to help? Mm -hmm. And that's where it came from. So it, it comes from a, a solid background with, with Bowen, which has got a, many years of, of history. So it's yeah, yeah. And a, and a massage um, therapist as well. As well, yeah. So you're adding all of that into the, to the mix, which is just powerful and comforting to know that it's not just a random person having a go. No, not at all. There's <laughs> many, many years experience in gone into this. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So um, what, what was the most exciting shift you've ever seen? Oh, goodness me. There's been so many. <laughs> I've been, so, I really consider it a privilege. Um, so probably one of the ones I had a client who throughout their entire childhood wanted to be a dancer in the West End. And around about the age of 15, 16, they kept dislocating their knee. And eventually they were, that's it, this is not going to happen. And their words to me were, on that day when they told me that, that was it. My life ended and I spiralled into a depression and I just didn't know what I was going to do with myself. And about a year after that, they had that uh, knee 
operated on to supposedly address what was causing the issue, but they've had issues with that knee ever since. So we applied the work to the knee and there was an awful lot of emotion. As you can imagine from the story I've just told you, a lot of emotion attached with that. Did the session and she got off my couch, walked to the end of the room and turned around and looked at me with tears rolling down her face and just said, I've got my childhood leg back. Oh, I mean, no yeah, and, and that's happened That's happened numerous times. It's, it's that powerful. So you can see how it's the pain had gone and there was the psychological and emotional release as well and that connection back with that part of the body because quite often with trauma comes a disassociation with whatever part of the body it may have happened to. So to, to see that connection back again um, is such a privilege, it really is. Oh, that's utterly beautiful. Okay, um, feel free to, anything else that you can think of that we urgently need to know, now, you know, now is the time. But if, I think we've covered a lot of the, the questions that people have been asking me because we've got this workshop coming up where you yep. come to come up to Letchworth on yep. the 2nd of June, yep. 2019. If you're seeing this after the event, people, it's just, that's just a one of the wonderful events yep. that Claire's running. But for those who are interested for the 2nd of June, 2019 in Letchworth, yep. um, we're going to add the link to where people can book for workshops, yep. not just for this individual workshop, for all the workshops that will be ongoing. Yeah. And... Also, if people are simply looking for therapists in their area, there will be part of that website that they can go to. to look. Yes, there is. So, yeah. Okay. So it's a one day class. Yeah. Um, we're now uh, recognized by quite a few um, associations for um, CPD, which is fantastic. Uh, you'll spend the day with me. We'll go through the theory more in depth of what we've talked about today. And then we get a lot of hands on practical, not just working how it was developed initially on the, on the scar itself, but the other applications mm -hmm. that we've talked about. So the shoulder restriction, the plantar fasciitis, we get a really good chance to practice that. And you get to ask all the questions that you need on that day. And then you've got my support after that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have an exam to um, complete. And then five case studies, which again, you've got my support for all of that. Once you've completed all of that, you get your certificate of proficiency and you get added to our practitioner directory on the website. That's brilliant. It's, um, yeah. And it's not, it's not expensive. It's not something you have to do endless amounts of training for because it's so practical and based on things that will be in relation to what we already know exactly exactly and as i say once you've done the class with me um i'm there for you um however you want to get hold of me you can ask me questions if you need to check whether someone is a suitable case study or something's cropped up that you're not quite sure about we also have a fantastic practitioner group on Facebook, which as a student you can join and you can read even more case histories and studies and, and get experience from all the other people in there who are already out there using this technique. Yeah, absolutely. And in, in my own short period of time, being simply a student at this point, the number, of, the amount of help Claire has given me is enormous. And, You're welcome. <laughs> and, I've, and I've been able to, to work with people who've had um, breast breast tissue issues, yeah. yeah. Some cancer, some from mastectomies, which were not necessarily cancer related. Yeah. Gallbladder uh, issues. Yeah. Just, like so many things that they would never have bothered to tell me about in no. previously. And we worked on them. Yeah, the results were so useful. Even even in that very first session, they could go, oh, the lumpy bits have gone. It's yeah, used out. I mean, that fascinated me. The actual physical sensation of the yeah, just went. 
um, this is yeah. uh, after all the surgery, everything settled down, people. I am following the rules, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good that you bring up um, things like gallbladder, which are quite often performed as a keyhole surgery, because we're led to believe that, you know, keyhole surgery, because aesthetically, there's only that tiny little scar. But if you think about, you know, say that this is pen here is the, is the shape of one of the instruments that they use, you might only have a scar that's less than an inch. Quite often they go in through the belly button. Mine is one centimetre. Wow. Yeah, teeny tiny. Oh. But when that goes through the other side, you don't have an instrument shaped hole just waiting there for them to go oh, yeah. in and fix you. Oh, so yeah. this has gone into your tissue and your body is, is forming a scar tissue once that instrument's removed. And I've had, this is another really great story, trainee paramedic had um, issues with spontaneous pneumothorax, which is um, when your lung collapses by itself. And they had a surgery and it was all done by a keyhole. She was very, very conscious of some of the scars um, didn't want to go um, swimwear shopping for her upcoming really big family holiday. She was very self-conscious and also had cramping at night in bed in, in the back of where her um, lung. So working with a paramedic who's a training and is uh, obviously medically based, I start working on these tiny, tiny little scars. And by the time we'd uh, done a few, sesh, few rounds of the, the technique, she said to me, she said, Claire, I know you're touching my skin, but each time it feels that you're moving deeper and deeper inside. And I, it's almost as if you're inside my rib cage where they did the work. So we finished the session and she left. And as she left, she said, I'm going to ring my sister now and I'm going to go swimwear shopping which was just amazing <laughs> and then the next day she messaged me to say that that night was the first night she hadn't had any cramping in the area since the operation was that as a okay study testimonial I think that's a perfect place to end it that is absolutely wonderful I'm so looking forward to the workshop because I will I will be there and getting second stage experience with you technically yeah. I can keep going and I know I, I feel confident but I'm so looking forward to working with other people in, in that workshop it will reinforce what you've already learned and the knowledge it's a really really good day absolutely all right I love it thank you so much for that and uh, to all the uh, the viewers watching if you can make it to this or you just want more information look in the description for the link to to Claire Grant and and how to book either treatment or therapeutic training. And, uh, and I look forward to seeing you on Healer Zone TV again in the near future. Thank you. Bye. Bye.